I have no problem admitting that I love the Suzuki Celerio. It's got a peppy engine, it's great to drive and has a surprising amount of space. Well, the all-new third-generation Suzuki Celerio is here and it takes that recipe and it dials things up to 11. This all-new third generation is now based on the Hartect platform, which is a platform that we've seen used in the Suzuki Swift and the Suzuki Baleno to great effect. It means that it's super strong and super lightweight. How lightweight, you ask? Well, the little Celerio weighs only 805 kilograms, but it doesn't sacrifice any of the safety. And, well, it looks kind of good too. The previous one was not much pot to look at, but this one is really, really nice. It's a little more rounded, a little more city car. It has a bit of a mini feel to it, and I like that a lot. You're gonna get the GA and GL models. GL models can be distinguished by the standard 15 inch alloy fitment. It's the GL that we've got here. Under the hood, you're going to get a new dual jet engine, the K10C engine. It is a one liter three cylinder engine, but it's pretty peppy. You're gonna get 49 kilowatts and 89 Newton meters of torque. Now I know that doesn't sound like a lot, but remember, it's only 805 kilograms, but it is wonderfully efficient. The CO2 emissions are so low that it's actually tax exempt. And in manual trim, you can expect to get a fuel consumption on the combined cycle of 4.4 liters per 100 kilometers. That is amazing, especially in this day and age where petrol costs what it does. Inside the Suzuki Celerio, it's pleasantly surprising. I'll give it that much. There's a lot of plastics here, but that's because the Suzuki Celerio is built to a price point. It's meant to be an affordable entry-level vehicle. It's not the cheapest Suzuki in their lineup. That accolade goes to the Espresso, but for the longest time it was. That said, this third generation has been heavily revised. So it's got a beautiful design dash that has sort of concentrated all the controls to the center here. So the electric windows and door locks and hazards, that's all up here. And on the GL models, you get this beautiful seven inch touchscreen infotainment system. It's got Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, and you can connect it down here at the bottom. There's also an additional 12 volt socket. It's got multifunction steering wheel with phone controls up here. It's got a digital tachometer with a readout for fuel consumption, range, and even alerts. It is surprisingly well equipped in here, especially at this price point. Space is relatively generous as well. So headroom is great, legroom is great. It's just the shoulder room's a little tight. So if you're slightly broader in the shoulder and playing front row rugby, you may find it a bit tight. You get in the back, it's even more impressive. There's tons of legroom in the back here. Headroom, pretty generous. I'm not the tallest bloke around, but I'm no penguin either. Pleasantly, pleasantly surprising. We've got electric windows, both front and rear, and we've got Isofix mountings in the outer rears here for your child seats. Then the boot. <laughs> boot's just as impressive. Yep, the boot's pretty big too. You get 295 liters of boot space back here and it's got a 60-40 folding rear seat. The parcel shelf, well, that's included. Then you get out on the road, and in the little Suzuki Celerio, well, it's a bit of a mixed bag, sadly. Now, the other one was a pretty decent all-rounder. This one, though, does have a few shortcomings, so I think let's get those out of the way before I highlight some of the things that I still really enjoy about the car. One, the weight saving can be noticed. You see, when you try to save weight and make a vehicle fuel efficient, you cut back on a few things. And in the Solerio's case, they've cut back on a bit of sound deadening. So the cabin is a little bit noisy. You're getting a little bit of drivetrain whine, wind noise and road noise. It's all permeating into the cabin. It's not really meant to be doing highway speeds like this, but it has to be able to do that. It's doing it here just fine, but it is a little on the noisy side, and that's going to be a bit tiring if you ever think of attempting a, a long journey in the Celerio. My other major gripe with the little Celerio is the steering. It has electronic power steering, and the feeling isn't all that good. It actually is probably one of the worst steering systems that I've ever used, particularly at low speed. What is pleasantly surprising though is that 
sort of dissipates as soon as you pick up to highway speeds. It seems to have a variable rate to it. So it weightens up and it feels rather stiff here at highway speeds. And that's not a bad thing. So it's not the greatest in and around town. It's not confidence inspiring, but out on the highway, well, that sort of fades into the background. Third thing, the springs, the suspension. It is tuned to be an Econobox, a light, fuel-efficient vehicle. And the suspension isn't tuned for hard cornering or aggressive driving. So it's a little bit on the soft side. It's a, a little bit wallowy. It nose dives a little bit under braking and through the corners while well, it feels like it's going to go and lie down on its door handles. But it's not terrible. You actually get accustomed to it after a while and you feel like, well, you can really rip around town in this little thing. The seats are pretty comfortable. I don't know how long these bolsters are going to hold up though. They feel like they may give way in the coming years, but if you change your car on a fairly regular basis, that's probably not gonna bother you. It's gonna bother the second owner though. But what am I liking about it? Well, it's still enjoyable to drive. The motor's peppy and zippy. Uh, it does highway speeds without a problem. And the fuel consumption takes a little bit of a knock when you, well, plant it into the carpet to join the highway at highway speeds, 120 kilometers an hour, but then it soon tumbles again. Mixed bag of driving, we're seeing, well, high fives, and that's not bad. A little bit of highway driving, and I'm pretty sure that you'll see it drop down to that claimed 4.4, if not lower. It's tumbling all the way here. It just got hurt with that hard acceleration, which is, of course, terrible for fuel consumption. If you're in and out of traffic and the traffic isn't really flowing free, you're going to change through the gears. But that's one of the things I love about it. This is a fantastic little gearbox. It's great to drive. You don't miss gears, you know exactly where the gears are and it's got this satisfying mechanical little notch to it. It really is a lovely little gearbox. I was not expecting to find that in a Celerio. Not in a car at this price range. The little Celerio, or at least the new one, is a lot safer than the old one as well. So, this one has dual airbags, passenger and driver. It has ABS with EBD, electronic brake force distribution, helps keep the car nice and level under hard braking. It also has emergency brake assist. That's something new. Then, for the first time, it has ESP, an electronic skid program, which means that it's going to help keep you pointed in the right direction when things get a little hairy or you need to make an evasive maneuver. A little bit of peace of mind. Of course, we have inertia reel seat belts here and isofix mountings in the rear, as we've mentioned. So it's a lovely little family car. It's got a sizable boot, it's got decent headroom, and it's not that expensive. Pricing for this new third generation Suzuki Celerio starts at just shy of 175,000 Rand for the GA model. But you want the one that we're in here, and that's the GL model. That's gonna cost you just shy of 195,000 Rand. And it's the one that you want because it has all the bells and whistles, it has the seven inch touchscreen with Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, and it has a service plan. And that's something that is missing from the GA. Both of them come with a five year, 200,000 kilometer warranty, but you'll want that service plan. It's a small one. It's only a two year and 30,000 kilometer service plan. So it'll cover two services, but it's better than nothing. On the GA, you will be able to specify it as an optional extra. Oh, so then that burning question, would I be prepared to spend my money and put a Celerio in my garage? I really wanted to. I really wanted to. It's got the mod cons and the bells and whistles that I would want from a vehicle, especially a vehicle that is so light on fuel and so practical. I really wanted to like it. I liked the direction they were going in. I liked it. They were ambitious. And then it got ruined by that steering and that suspension at highway speed, sweepers. Oh, it's nerve wracking actually. So for the inexperienced driver, I don't know that that's the best. If you're not gonna do highway driving, then sure, not a problem. Uh, in and around town, you can live with the vagueness of the steering. But if you do any highway driving, you're probably going to want to look somewhere else. But don't take my word for it. Go out there, test drive the new Celerio, see if it ticks the boxes that are important to you as a customer. 
you're the one that has to live with it after all. And see if you could put a Suzuki Celeria in your garage. You're gonna love the fuel savings. That you're gonna love. That and this gearbox are brilliant. I do enjoy driving it. <laughs>